Hi everybody, Father Bill Holtzinger here, and this is your Friday Reflection. Many moons ago, I put a posting on Facebook speaking about Mass as worship. And I got a comment on there saying, that was blasphemous. And I thought, what? Strange, huh? Well, there's a misunderstanding by this individual who made that comment thinking that Worship is modern worship where you see maybe in some other churches where they have music that's kind of more rock and roll and singing and hands in the air and giving praise to God, which is also worship. But technically speaking, the Mass is worship. The word comes from an old English word to mean worthy or worth-ship, to give something worth. And that's what we're doing. When we worship God, for example, we are saying something, making a statement about God, either through music, uh, our prayers, words, whatever it might be, that, that God is number one and He is worthy of such recognition. He is all good, all great, all loving, all compassionate. And to say those things, again, He is worthy of that. He, those statements are true. And then when we say, and I give myself to you, I give myself all to you, I am even maybe adoring, that is worship. Now, the Eucharist actually, receiving the Eucharist is a form of worship. Why would that be? Well, because the person says the body of Christ before you would receive it, right? The priest or the extraordinary ministry of Holy Communion, they say the body of the Christ, which is a declaration of not just this is a piece of bread, it's the body, and not even just Jesus, though it is Jesus, it's Jesus who is the Christ, the anointed one. Right? Jesus, the word Jesus means God saves, but <clears throat> that was a common name in the time. But Jesus Christ is saying something about his exaltedness. And to then our response being Amen is a form of worship. We're acknowledging this truth about who God is in the Eucharist. Now, in the Eucharist, I'm going to get out the catechism here. <clears throat> we often refer to this as adoration. And there's moments of adoration where you may be gazing upon the Eucharist at the elevation at Mass, or we're gazing. And that can be also a form of worship because we are thinking about God. We're gazing upon His presence. But here's what adoration is. This is from the catechism paragraph. 2096. Adoration is the first act of the virtue of religion. To adore God is to acknowledge Him as God, as the Creator and Savior, the Lord and Master of everything that exists, as infinite and merciful love. So we are worshiping worship. Adoration is a form of worship. We're giving this sense that God is the Creator, God is the Savior. He is worthy of all of our thoughts that are good and our desires to be with Him and to change our lives for Him. Adoration is a time then is uh, an act of virtue by which we are gazing upon the Lord. He continues, quote, You shall worship the Lord your God and Him alone, Him only shall you serve, quote, says Jesus, citing Deuteronomy. as Deuteronomy uh, 6.13, or excuse me, it's Deuteronomy, let's see, uh, yeah. Uh, 6.13. So continuing uh, paragraph 2097. To adore God is to acknowledge in respect and absolute submission the nothingness of the creature. The nothingness of the creature, like we're low and God is high. The, the nothingness of the creature who would not exist but for God. I love that. So in respect to absolute submission, the nothingness of the creature who would not exist but for God. To adore God is to praise and exalt Him and to humble oneself, as Mary did in the Magnificat, confessing with gratitude that He has done great things and holy is His name. The worship of the one God sets man free from turning in on himself, from the slavery of sin and the idolatry, idolatry of the world. So we could mix the word worship with adoration, but adoration is a form of worship. So at Mass, when we lift up the host, 
There's nothing to be said. But so you might hear some people say things, you know, praise you, God, we love you, Lord, whatever it might be. Uh, that is a form of worship. And maybe you go to our Adoration Chapel and we go to Adoration. Maybe it's silent. Maybe you're gazing upon the host at that time. That's just one form of worship. At Mass, there's so many other forms of worship. So um, there's a scripture here in Isaiah 61. And this section goes like this. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Jesus, by the way, quoted this, right? When he went into the Capernaum, the, the uh, synagogue in Capernaum. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to bring good tidings to the afflicted. And it goes on. And in verse 3, we get this. This is uh, a key part. And it gets translated differently if I go to the New International Version. But right now, this is the Revised Standard Version. It says, To grant those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. I want to focus on that last part, a mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. Another way this uh, goes is this. Um, <clears throat> and this again is in now the New International Version, a common Protestant text, but an excellent translation. The New American Bible struggles with this. The, the idea of a garland or a vestment of praise is obscured by the, the translation, but it's pretty clear here. And it goes on to chapter 3. To provide for those who grieve in Zion, to bestow on them a crown of beauty, so a crown instead of a garland, a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. So worship can do so many things. First of all, it puts God in our hearts in the right order and puts us in the right order in relationship to God. There, it's a way of expressing the worthiness of God you can say, and our unworthiness in, in comparison. But how many times, and I want to I encourage this because worship is a great antidote to struggling in faith, or in this case, as we hear in the international, New International Version, a spirit of despair. So when, whenever you have a spirit of despair, and I have these myself, when's the last time you felt heavy, or things are going really bad, or you're struggling? Somehow something has happen to you and you're you're deeply in a sense of despair of sadness what are we called to do put the garment of praise on think of it as like a actual cloak or some vestment it's kind of a nice image what is it it's praise praise is another form of worship when we sing we often sing songs of praise the psalms have psalms of praise uh, one of the songs we sing, which is wonderful, I want to encourage you to be aware of this, and we hear this, is very popular on the radio, and it is now present in our books at Mass called 10,000 Reasons. Maybe you're aware of this, 10,000 Reasons by Matt Redman and Jonas Mirren. Those are the authors. And the chorus goes like this, and I'm reading over here, so pardon me, the screen's on my right. <clears throat> Bless the Lord, O my soul. O my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, O oh my soul, I'll worship your holy name. In other words, his name, God's name, Jesus. This name is above all names. And then to use his name in delight and honor in a song is a form of praise. And the actual song is saying that, I'll worship your holy name. In other words, I'll not use it in vain. I will not use it in a way that is a derogatory or a swear word. And then the verses are like this. So the first one goes, The sun comes up, it's a new day dawning. It's time to sing your song again. What song is this? A song of praise. Whatever may pass, whatever lies before me, let me be singing when the evening comes. So when, you, when something happens to you, when something difficult happens, I know myself, I am tempted to get angry, get sad, I uh, feel hopeless, but here is the antidote to praise the Lord, to thank him for all his blessings, to raise his name up in honor, knowing that he's got all of this. He's in control. This song again continues. I'll keep going on. The chorus again goes on. And then the second verse says, You're rich in love and slow to anger. Again, quoting the scripture. Your name is great and your heart is kind. Look, at these are all statements of worship. Lifting up, 
who God is. For all your goodness, I will keep on singing. In other words, the song itself is talking about worship and by doing it is worshiping. Now, as we come to the Eucharist, imagine bringing your struggles, bringing your difficulties, but as you do so, praising the Lord. Watch what it does to you. I know it changes my sensibilities dramatically. Like never before my soul, I will worship your holy name. And then the verse three, this is the key verse. I love this. And on that day when my strength is failing, haven't you had those days? I have. I'm, it's tough. The end draws near and my time has come. Now we're thinking about the end of our lives. Still my soul sings your praise unending 10,000 years and then forevermore. This is a great song. So next time you hear it in, at Mass, be aware of these words. No, this is a moment of, of worship and it, and it can prepare us during communion and before communion or after communion to continue this worship, this worth-ship, putting God in the right order in our hearts, declaring who God is, who's number one, and we're less than God. Sometimes you see bumper stickers that says I and then a less than sign and then he. In other words, we're less than he or you can reverse it. He, God, is greater than I. That's brilliant marketing because that's what we need. That is actually also a form of worship, recognizing the right place of God in the world and in our hearts. So next time you're struggling, next time you are burdened, Put on this sense of praise. It may seem crazy because it may be the very last thing you want to do. I know sometimes for me, it's just I don't want to do it. But then maybe find some music like this song, 10,000 Reasons. Or other maybe songs that you have that are praise songs, worship songs, to help reorient and recognize God is involved. God is in control. God loves you and has compassion on you, does not want you to fall apart. And in Him, you do not need to despair. With Him, 10,000 years from now, your praise will be permanent. This time in our life may be difficult, but in the terms of eternity, it's small. So this is like a prescription. Now, I use it myself. This is how we fight our struggles, our battles, the difficulties of our life, that is by not responding in anger. And, and as we heard last week from uh, Father Anthony, and you know, when people say things to shout back at them, but to return a blessing, to give praise to God in the midst of what seems absolutely crazy, something that normally we would never say, but just watch, do, do it. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul. I will always praise your name, even in the difficulties, and in fact, in especially in those difficulties. And watch how it changes things for you. Well, folks, this weekend, I will be preaching. Yes, I'm feeling better. I've tested negative for the last, well, I've been te testing positive for COVID because of just the residuals, and I finally have gotten to that point where I've tested negative. I feel good. Uh, I've got a little scratchy throat, just kind of the resonance of things from uh, kind of like when you have a cold and you're kind of getting those cruds out of your, your chest and stuff. But uh, feeling good. And thank you for your prayers. I'll be offering Mass to different Masses. Well, again, Father Anthony, I will be switching it up. And I ask that you uh, pray for me as I prepare the homily. I'm thinking about the theme of conversion. And kind of in a way, this is one of those things we can do when we have struggles. And we are tempted to have one way of thinking about this, to let the Lord in so that we can have a change of thinking and in our heart. I'll see you this weekend. God bless you. Bye-bye.